Hey, this is Dave at HouseParents.com. Today we're gonna to take on the task of showing you the options that exist when you're dealing with a sagging floor and your potential ways of, of fixing the issue. We got three options for you. They all are gonna vary depending on your individual circumstances. Now, whenever you're dealing with a sagging floor, the number one thing we always tell people to do is consult a structural engineer. The first thing you gotta do is address the problem. What caused the sag? This video is dealing with how to functionally get rid of the sag, but the sag is a symptom of an underlying problem. So first things first, get a structural en engineer in there and determine what the problem is. The problem could be rotted joists, could be some structural issue that needs to be dealt with first before you even deal with the floor. And struct structural engineers are way worth the money you spend on them to have peace of mind and know that what you're doing is appropriate for your circumstances. Uh, well, in the perfect world, you have your joists that hold up your floor, and then on top of it is subflooring, which is usually plywood or OSB, or maybe even plank flooring that's pretty thick to really hold it up well. And then on top of the subfloor is your finished floor. Over time, what happens is maybe a joist or two start to sag down low. And so of course that takes your subfloor and your finished floor with it and you get that curve, you get that sag. The first option is to remove the finished floor and cut away the sagging subfloor. The first option assumes that you don't have an asbestos issue. If your house was built say before 1980 or 1982, you gotta be aware of asbestos concerns. And so if, if it is, you may want to get that floor tested first before you deal with that because that's a safety issue. Uh, let's assume though that your house is, you know, say built in the 90s and you're not really concerned about asbestos. The first option, once that's all open and your joists are exposed, what we're going to do is sister onto each of those joists another 2x6 or 2x8 and to raise the height up back to level once those sister joists are in there we can now go ahead and lay a new subfloor and then a new finished floor. And what we've done is restored the room to its original level and flat condition without adding any height. And that's, that's really a, a, the best option. Let's say that's not the option that you wanna choose for any variety of reasons. The second option is one where we're gonna still assume that you can remove the finished floor, but maybe you don't wanna cut into the existing floor and deal with all the demo and debris. With just the sloping subfloor, what we're gonna do in option number two is go ahead and add pieces of plywood uh, to fill in that gap. Uh, the extra pieces of plywood are gonna add a little more weight to the floor, but uh, shouldn't be as much of a worry as if you were adding, say, floor filler to fill in all of that gap. If you've got a big gap, uh, then you don't wanna use you know, literally a ton of concrete on a, on a floor that's already been compromised. So what we're gonna do now is we'll add layers of plywood, each sheet, the appropriate thickness to take up that gap. And then with whatever little gaps are left, we can add a little bit of floor leveler in those places and fill in the gaps. Now your finished floor has a, a new solid surface on which to be laid. In this particular instance, we didn't get into removing the subfloor. We did remove the finished floor and we filled the gaps and now we lay down our new finished floor. Check out the video in the upper right and you can see what we did in this particular video. In this third option, let's assume that we're not removing the subfloor and we're not removing the finished floor. Let's, let's pretend in this situation that you've got uh, asbestos tile or you've got some fear of that or maybe you just don't want to deal with any of the demo and debris and all of that. This third option is probably a little easier in that you just lay down new floor on top of the old floor. And so in this particular instance, we're not removing any subfloor, we're not removing any finished floor, we're simply going to shim out the sunken portion of the floor, the portion of the floor that sagged. In this video up here, what we did was added uh, about 12 inch by 12 inch plywood shims. of varying thicknesses across the floor, spaced them out about every 12 inches, and that way we had a new flat level surface to mount our new additional subfloor on top of, and once that was all laid down, we added our new finished floor. 
there is an issue with doing this. While it's simpler and you have less demo debris, you have a problem with the door heights now and possibly your molding height in the room. You've added new subfloor and new finished floor, and so now your doors are most likely going to interfere. So what you have to do in, in the room, everywhere in the room where there's doors, you have to cut the bottoms of the doors off to make sure that they no longer interfere with your now raised flooring. While it's simpler on one end, you have more things to worry about with your door heights. But again, these are three options that give you some idea of the possibilities. In all of these examples, we're assuming you're not jacking up the floor. That's an entirely different way of addressing the issue and it brings in a whole host of other things to consider. Jacking up the floor is certainly more complicated in, in its variables. Hope this video helps. Be sure and like and subscribe. Share this video with your friends. If you got anything out of this video, give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate that. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in the next video.